Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here. Join me today as I set up my citric acid CO2 system for my planted aquarium and find out what I learned along the way. First, let's take a look at all the materials that I assembled before beginning the project. Right here is the CO2 reactor apparatus itself. Right here is the safety valve. This is the pressure gauge here. And then right here is the air adjustment valve the bottles screw into these areas right here inside you can see what i imagine are silicone o-rings and it comes with some spare o-rings in case those fail and then it's got the this feels like silicone tubing in here as well here it's got this apparatus to allow you to regulate the height of this tube within the bottle. I think that's cool. It's got the magnet on the outside and then that allows you to lift or drop this within the uh, citric acid solution. Pretty ingenious. And then it's got a three-way valve that goes into the baking soda uh, bottle. All right. Came with some plastic tubing. I also was happy to see it's got some pretty good instructions it's also got a link to a video the video doesn't have any uh, explanation any verbal explanation in it but it, it is a pretty decent video and then it's got this extra one to show about how to regulate the uh, liquid using the magnet assembly all right and then as you may have seen in my other video i got the five pounds of citric acid went to the grocery store and bought some baking soda and a couple of bottles of root beer which I emptied out, rinsed out and removed the packaging from. And then I got some additional silicone airline tubing and of course a bubble counter and picked up a check valve at the pet store. So as you can see I've now labeled the bottles A which is where the citric acid is going to go and B where the baking soda is going to go. Now, the measurements in the kit are supplied in milliliters, and I don't have a, a good way to measure this amount of milliliters, but it works better for me to think of it in terms of ratios, which uh, the king of DIY described in his video. Basically, uh, you put the equal amount of citric acid powder and baking soda into each bottle, so 200 milliliters of each, but then you put 600 milliliters of water in with the co2 and 200 milliliters of water in with the baking soda so in other words you dilute the citric acid with three times the amount of water and the baking soda is equal amounts water and baking soda so here we go I'm going to put half a cup of citric acid in, which is approximately 200 milliliters. Okay, I've got to interject here. Though I did get the ratios right, I messed up the amounts. I was supposed to put an entire cup of citric acid and three cups of water in bottle A, and an entire cup of baking soda and one cup of water in bottle B. So that's what I'll do next time. that in get it all the way in And here is half a cup of baking soda. So now I'm going to add the water. Half a cup of water to half a cup of baking soda. And then 
shake it up, help it get it mixed up quite a bit. Now the instructions mention that it's normal for some of the baking soda, some of the baking soda to remain, you know, in powder form and sit at the bottom. And that's that's fine. All right. And now we'll put in the cup and a half of water in here with the citric acid. Shake that up. It seems to dissolve a lot more easily than the uh, baking soda. All right. And now, just insert the tubes into the proper bottles. Tighten them. Okay. Now they appear to be tight enough, I hope. Put this magnet on with the uh, container. Put the magnet on there. And now. I'm supposed to squeeze this bottle. And do that several times. I'm supposed to repeat that process. Oh wow. You can already feel the pressure building up inside this bottle. That's interesting. And then I'm supposed to turn the valve on and off. Do that a couple of times. Shake it a little bit. And then check the pressure. And the pressure, it looks like, definitely building up, starting to get into the green area. So I'll do that one or two more times. I'll repeat the process a little bit. Okay, and it says that the pressure should be around one kilogram after the reaction, so that looks good. Now I'm going to connect the tubing. So here we go. To connect the tubing, Unscrew this, stick this on here. Here I was a little bit reluctant about really turning that valve. I sh should have just turned it a little bit more. It was fine. Yeah. 
had to experiment a bit with this valve, but it took a while to get it to a place where it was actually open. But now I can hear and feel the pressure building up when I turn that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off again. So I temporarily set up this 2.5 gallon aquarium just to uh, assemble everything and make sure it's working. So we've got the bubble counter here. I need to put some water in it. So I've got the bubble counter filled with water. Now I use this little clip that comes with it. Just press it into this slot here and that will allow me to hang it on the side of the aquarium, on the outside of the aquarium. This arrow means the CO2 is going to be coming out of this one and going towards the tank. And this arrow means CO2 goes in here. So I'll attach the CO2 to the side of the tank. Okay, so I tighten this down. Put the CO2 input. Drop the clip in the water there, so I'll put that back on. Okay. So we've got CO2 input. I just had this pair, spare piece here, so I don't mind just cutting this. And attaching this for the diffuser. Oh. <laughs> not working very well. Just have to get this on there. There we go. Hook this on right here. And then tighten it down. So that should be tight enough for now. Put this right here. So we've got the CO2, whoop. And after fiddling with this clip for a while and having it fall off the tank several times, it keeps falling. I realized that it was just better to use the included suction cup. So that's what I did. Let's see if that does any better. Holding on to there. So my diffuser, this is an old diffuser I had for years, I haven't used it for a long time. So I'll put that down into there, see if we can get that going. And now I'll just turn the valve until we begin to see something happening. There's some CO2 starting several bubbles per second, but it's starting to slow down. slows down quite a bit, doesn't it? But I can see also the pressure building up in the diffuser, slowly traveling down the line there. So we'll give that a few minutes, and I'll play with the valves a little bit, and we'll come back and see how it's doing. Well, I increased the flow just a bit, and a few seconds later, we have got CO2. You can see it flowing there. I'll try to get a better shot of that. And there you go. It's only been about a minute or so since I connected everything. And the bubble counter is going probably about every two, two and a half seconds. And we have got CO2 diffusing into the water column. So the next step is to hook it up to my aquarium. As of today, I've had my citric acid CO2 system set up for one week. So I'd like to kind of explain how it compares to having a yeast reactor system, which I've done in the past. Well, first of all, I noticed that the CO2 system produces very quickly. It takes quite a while for the pressure to build up in a yeast system, but that was not true at all for the CO2 system. Within minutes, it had quite a bit of pressure. And in fact, 
Pressure is something else that's quite a bit different. This produces a lot more pressure than any of the yeast systems that I've used in the past. Another benefit of the CO2 system that there's, is that there's no unpleasant smell. A yeast system, depending on the recipe you use, if you just use sugar and water and yeast, you'll just get kind of a yeasty smell which may or may not bother you. But if you use some of the other recipes which can produce uh, for longer and more effectively, they can be pretty stinky. So far I really like my citric acid CO2 system. It seems to be working really well for my tank. The plants are purling. I think it's great, but there's one problem. And I think that's partly because I didn't use enough citric acid and baking soda solutions. And that is that about five days into the uh, project, the citric acid had all been siphoned into the baking soda bottle. So all of bottle A or most of bottle A into bottle B and it had produced a lot more pressure than I needed. It was past the, the green area on the uh, pressure gauge. I was a little worried about that and the bubbles per second were too high and there was a lot of CO2 going through the, the diffuser into my tank. So I turned that down quite a bit and in fact right now I'm still running off the residual pressure from that just with the pressure dialed down and so um, everything's fine in the tank. I haven't had any problems with fish and in fact since I have an aerator that goes off whenever the lights are not on that helps to outgas any excess CO2. But I'm still dialing in exactly how to regulate the pressure and I'm sure that's something that will come with time. In the next video in my citric acid CO2 series I'll show you the effect on my tank. Thanks for watching. I release new videos every Friday all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to leave a comment or a like, or share a video, or if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss anything. You can also check out my Patreon page or buy an Aquarimax t-shirt or mug at my Teespring storefront.